Over the last few videos, we've been developing an approximate solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation in the case where we have uh, slowly varying potentials. So far, we've uh, deduced that we can expect our uh, wave functions to take on the following form, where they depend on some unknown factor S of x. And uh, we've been working on try trying to solve or trying to figure out what this s of x is equal to. Plugging in this uh, assumption into the time independent Schrodinger equation got us to this new nonlinear differential equation for which we were able to say that for a slowly varying potential, uh, because this second term is very small, we can take a power series development of s of x in terms of this uh, reduced Planck constant h bar, uh, which is now serving as a measure of smallness in our approximation. And what this means is that any term of order h bar square or higher, so h, h bar cubed, h bar to a fourth, et cetera, will be considered negligibly small because already we know that for slowly varying potentials, uh, terms with uh, order h bar are already very small. So we're going to plug in this approximate solution or approximate form, because we still don't know what these two quantities are into our differential equation. Okay, so uh, so we're uh, plugging it into uh, this equation over here, which will denote by this little star. Okay, so our first term over here, we just take the first derivative of these two and we end up with that. Then our second term, uh, we have to take the second derivative of both of these. Here, we encounter a term that's of order h bar squared. And because of our assumption over here, we're going to say that this is negligibly small. And all this has to be equal to our local momentum squared. So this is all equal to p squared of x. If we collect uh, terms of the same order of h bar, so anything that's that doesn't have an h bar put together, anything that has h bar uh, to first order, so terms like these will go together. We can get it into another form. Okay, so this is uh, terms with uh, zeroth order in h bar. And this is all the terms of order h bar. So this one is this term over here. And this one comes from uh, the cross, uh, the cross term when you expand this square. We've also lost another term over here because when you expand the square, you're going to get a term uh, h bar squared ds1 dx. And that term will also go to zero under our approximation of ignoring terms of h bar squared or higher. And because we've moved everything over to one side, uh, this is all 
equal to zero. We've moved the p square x over to the other side. Okay, and then for this equation to be satisfied because it's a power series expansion, each one of these terms has to be identically zero. So this term uh, has to be zero and this whole term has to be zero. If both of them are zero, then our equation is satisfied. And what this means then is from our first term, we get that uh, ds not dx squared is equal to p square x from this over here. And from this one, It's a bit, um, it's a little messy, but you get something like this. So this is the first condition we have to satisfy. And this is the second condition we have to satisfy. If we can solve for S naught and S one, then we will have our solution for S of X or approximate solution for S of X. Okay, so we'll start with the solution to equation one because it's easy. If you take the square root of both sides over here, you get that the first derivative of S naught with respect to X has to be equal to plus or minus P of X. This is uh, technically speaking, a first order separable differential equation, which has the following solution. Uh, we're going to put bounds here to avoid integration constants uh, or constants of integration for now. So we'll integrate from some uh, position x naught all the way to another position x. We're integrating this local momentum. Okay, so we've solved equation one. Now we can use this solution uh, or rather this, this form to uh, solve for equation two. Okay, so equation two is ds1 dx is equal to i over two. We're going to uh, substitute the second derivative of s naught by plus or minus dpx dx. And the first derivative we know from uh, developing a solution to equation one that that's equal to plus or minus px. And so uh, just to, to write it out here. Okay, uh, the plus or minus cancel out so whenever this term is positive, this is also positive. When this term is negative, this is also negative. So that cancels out. We're left with this expression. We can rewrite this type of factor, this dpx dx one over px. This is uh, by the chain rule the same thing as the derivative of the natural log of P of X. Okay, so we have the, the 
derivative of S1 of X is proportional to the derivative of the natural log of P of X. This means that uh, whatever term we have over here has to be proportional to this term and the proportionality is just I over two. So that means that S1 of X will be I two natural log of P of X plus uh, some constant of integration if we were to formally integrate both sides. Okay, so we also have an expression for S1 of X. So now we can go back to our, the original form of our wave function, which we said looked like this. And S of X we're saying is approximately equal to S of X plus H bar S1 of X. We now have expressions for S naught and S1, so we can plug that in. This is equal to uh, we'll call this uh, constant a prime for now. Okay, so S naught of X had two possible solutions. It could be plus this integral or minus this integral. So we actually have two solutions. And S one of X we get something like this. Uh, we can simplify this natural logarithm over here. Uh, there's another I here from uh, this part there. So the I's will cancel out. This uh, log one half log of px uh, or e to the one half log px simplifies to one over square root of px. And you have um, this extra constant of integration, which uh, technically speaking, this one should be, this should have an i as well as a purely complex number. And that's just from uh, uh, distributing the I to both terms when we do the integration. Okay, we're going to absorb this constant into this one to get uh, terms that look like this. Okay, so since we have two linearly independent solutions. Our general solution will be a linear combination of those two. So our WKB wave functions are given by the following expression. So 
So this is taking the positive term. And the second one is taking the negative term. Okay, so this is uh, the one of the central results of the WKB approximation where the wave functions will take on this general form. And again, this P of X is uh, this semi-classical idea of a local momentum. Okay, so this is our solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation in the WKB approximation. So if you go back for a moment to uh, what we considered our form of S of X, we now know that S naught of X gave us, uh, was real and it gave us the phase of our wave function or the phase of, of the matter wave of the particle. And S one of X was purely imaginary and they gave us the amplitude, it gave us this uh, one over square root of P of X uh, of our wave function. Um, so in the next video, we'll just make some general remarks about this expression, in particular, this local momentum and what happens in uh, what's sometimes known as classically allowed and classically forbidden regions.